Welcome to my test of the Volkswagen E-Up. Today, my main ambition is to try and drive it 60 miles away, which might not sound very difficult, as this car has a claim range of 93 miles. However, it's November, it's absolutely chucking it down with rain, and in the test yesterday, which was when I got the car, it really didn't seem to want to do 60 miles at all. In fact, it could probably just about get there, as long as there weren't too many hills. And as this is Wales, this really is going to be quite a challenge. So let's see how I get on. That's also always the eerie bit of just easing away. So now we're um, onto a um, slightly more major road, and I've got a little power meter in front of me which shows me how many kilowatt hours roughly. Um, I'm burning at any one time, and I'm trying to keep it um, no higher than two at the moment. I desperately try and eke out what little battery I've got. And that's not too difficult to do actually. I, I'm deliberately limiting my speed to 50 miles an hour, but then I often drive a minibus which is only legally able to do 50 on these roads anyway, so I'm not finding that any great hardship. I am having to run the air conditioning because otherwise the car just mists up. And in fact there isn't an off button for the air conditioning, you can turn the fan right down, but I don't think it ever completely turns the ventilation system off, unlike some other electric cars I've driven. So at the moment I've covered 5 miles, the range has already dropped to 64, but we are still climbing quite a big hill as we head towards Slangerig. So we've now travelled 15 miles and over the past 10 or so miles my range has remained at 58-ish miles because we've been coming downhill, so the range hasn't been going down because we've been using very little energy. My average consumption is still 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour though, which is quite poor. Bearing in mind over the summer, I was getting about five in similar terrain in the Volkswagen E-Golf. 4.5 if I was particularly enjoying myself. I'm not in eco mode yet, because I really do want to test this and see exactly what I'm getting just now stuck at some traffic lights because as it's so often the way over the winter they do a lot of road maintenance around here while there are no tourists. So the only noise at the moment is um, the wipers which suddenly become very obvious when you've got no engine noise and you can just hear the gentle fan of the air conditioning. I have just reached Newtown a town very much in need of a bypass, which thankfully has just been given the go-ahead. I can't wait for that. Now, I usually hate driving through Newtown because there's usually so much traffic, it's just infuriating. But an electric car is really nice in traffic, so let's see what we encounter today. Back to this journey itself, um, I've still got over half a tank of electricity and we're over halfway now so things are looking pretty positive on that last section nice clean run generally stuck to 45 50 miles an hour and my average consumption has gone up to 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour so that's not too bad at all for this time of year bearing in mind i'm not in eco mode and i have got the heating on i've turned the air conditioning off because the car seems to have dried out a bit in here the windows aren't steamed up anymore but generally I'm quite pleased with how things are gone. So we've still got about another 28 miles to go until we reach the rapid charger at Oslo Street. I'm just hoping that rapid charger is online. That is one of the issues for a lot of these sites, there's only one charger. So if that charger is offline, you are screwed. Especially as it's at least another 20 miles to the next rapid charger. So fingers crossed eh, let's hope for the best. So I know blatting along the countryside the other side of Welsh Pool and um, we've covered 48 miles so far, I've still got 25 miles of range which is nice and um, I'm up to 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour. I will say one thing, I've got the heater setting quite cool. Um, I'm cheating by wearing a lovely big jumper, I've actually got my thermal long johns on but as when I had the Nissan EN V200 last year it's the feet that end up really cold. I've got the blowers set to feet, but it's trying to be really gentle in the way it pumps the heat out, and I must admit, my feet are a little on the chilly side. Okay, things are now feeling a little scary. I'm down to 11 miles of driving range left, 
we've covered 59 miles, so my Google Maps experience tells me we should be no more than a mile away from the Charger. But still, seeing that range coming down is scary stuff. It's now flashing warnings and telling me to hope that there's no chargers within range, which suggests to me it doesn't even know this charger is here. I should try and enter that into the sat-nav when I get there. Now let's just hope as the mileage clicks down to 10 miles of range, but I haven't misjudged and that the service station really is at the end of this stretch of road. Ooh. Oh, and here we are. Nine miles of range remaining, and we have reached the services. Phew. Now all I need to do is hope the charger is actually functional. Phew. Made it. Now I just need to use my card to charge up. It's an electric highway card. They're currently free, but it's likely they will be charged for fairly soon. So, I'll, it's pouring with rain, there's no cover. I'm going to go and do this very quickly. What a beautiful day. And there we go, it's as quick and as simple as that. Most of the waiting is just for the system to get started. Um, it's very quick to just plug in, press the card against the reader, and here we go. There's now 300 volts or something flooding into this car. And this means several things. It means I can put the key back in, and I can run the heater. And I'm also going to charge up my camera. So there we go, we made it quite comfortably in the end. We're now getting a full tank of juice and then we shall head home. If you were wondering how long it actually takes to charge up, well, I, I've been parked here for all of about five minutes and already the gauge is up to a quarter. It was just above the red when I pulled up. So it shouldn't take too long. It's getting nice and t toasty in here as well. So I reckon half an hour, maybe 40 minutes to get a full charge. It does slow down as the tank gets more and more full and we should be good to go. In the meantime, I can show you some of the lovely colourful dashboard features of the UP. Uh, look, that's almost quarter. It's almost an Allegro. So the battery is very nearly full now after about 25 minutes. I forgot, of course, the UP's got a smaller battery. The problem is, this is already demonstrating, look. We've got another car queuing up, that's a Nissan Leaf, and they're hoping I'm going to be going soon. So um, I'm going to go and see how it's going on and hopefully we can get underway again. There you go, now I'm charged up, you get a change of angle. Um, I don't know if you can see but the Nissan Leaf is now um, charging up behind me and uh, he's also now enjoying the rain. So we've now got a range the car reckons of 89 miles, I charged up to 96% because the more full the battery gets, the less inclined it is to accept more energy. It's like blowing up a balloon so it gets more and more difficult the closer you get to capacity. There we go, gently building speed up, trying to keep it below 20% throttle application. That's us up to 40 already. The drive home is going to be more interesting because I think we're sort of working our way uphill as we get back into the mountains again. So I'm going to use the cruise control, set that at 50 and away we go. Let's hope for the best, see if I can get home. I'm in eco mode but it doesn't seem to be making a great deal of difference. Now partly it's because I suspect it doesn't actually make a great deal of difference. I mean, it throttles back to power to stop you getting full power, but I'm not even trying to go anywhere near maximum power anyway. By far the biggest problem, and one I hadn't borne in mind, is wind. I had a tailwind all the way there, and I just about made it. Now I've got a headwind, and um, yeah, it, it could blow my calculations completely out of the water. I'm following someone who seems quite content to do 40, 45 miles an hour at the moment. Normally I'll go flying past and I'll be on my way, but actually it's quite good to have someone setting the pace at the moment, a nice, slow, gentle, boring pace. Things are starting to get a bit desperate. 
16 miles left, I've got 17 miles of range. And I'm having to almost crawl. We're doing slightly under 40 miles an hour at the moment. I'm keeping a nervous eye in the rear view mirror because this is a lot slower than the speed limit. And while a limit is just that, not necessarily a target, truth is you get a lot of fast moving traffic on this road and I am not it. So currently range has now dropped to 16 miles. We've still got 16 miles to go. This is going to be very difficult. I've put it in Eco Plus mode. I'm not sure what else is doing for me apart from making me slightly colder. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, this isn't exactly pleasant stuff. By reducing my top speed to 40, I'm just about breaking even at the moment. Range and distance are both 8 miles. Now I know I've got a downhill section before I get home. The question is, will that give me enough energy to actually make it back to my house? Which is up a hill. I'm having to really, really hyper mile now and the problem is I'm way below quarter of a tank and almost into the red and then it'll start cutting back the power. You can hear the wind. And this is one serious headwind I'm in. Using about 15% of the power, I can just about maintain 40 miles an hour up this hill. The range has now dropped to 7 miles. Still got 8.4 miles to cover. I genuinely don't know if I'm going to make it. Well, we're 2 miles away from home now, and the downhill section has allowed me to get the range back up to six miles. I'm very nearly in the last block on the gauge of battery life. So we're certainly going to cut it fine. Will we actually make it? We'll wait and see. I've put it in D mode now rather than B mode. B mode gives you lots of regenerative braking. But actually what I'm trying to do is conserve momentum. So when I come off the throttle I kind of want it to coast and leaving it in D allows me to do that. Bizarrely, the Volkswagen's in D mode, you can move the lever side to side and get different levels of regen, but I tend to find I either want lots or none at all, so I flip between D and B. In fact, coming down the hills just, I didn't touch the brake pedal at all. It's just when I realised I had to slow down more for a bend, I'd knock it into B to get the maximum regen, and then back into D again to let it coast. It's not really coasting in the traditional sense, it is, the drive line is still engaged. But sadly, while some electric cars are actually fine for long distance trips, I don't think I'm prepared to put the up in that category. And to drive, it's not bad at all. It just needs more range. So my range is still saying 5 miles, even though we're apparently 500 yards from home now. So it just goes to prove that uh, while well, you lose miles heavily, and at one stage I was in negative figures, I was um, 12 miles from home with 11 miles remaining. If you have faith, the downhills will usually get you those miles back. It's a combination of regen and also the car calculating how much energy it thinks you'll need to get home. But gosh, it's good to be home. Thank you for watching. See you next time.